friend of mine, we've been friends for about uh, 12 years, 11 years. I, uh, when I first started out back in 1938, <laughs> thank you, uh, I got a good doctor. Um, the, the biggest, one of the biggest breaks that I had in my first year of being a recording artist was that I, you know, we were playing clubs. We were playing these really funky clubs, you know, like everybody does when they get started, even though I had a record out that was doing okay. But then I got this magical phone call that said, do you want to open for REO Speedwagon? And I said, not really. <laughs> I, was, I was so blown away because, uh, you know, being from Chicago, number one, and number two, just being a fan of that kind of great rock and roll. I was a big REO fan in high school. I, Kevin's back there, I get really pissed off now. Um, <laughs> but uh, I got a chance to open for these guys for about three months. And on top of being able to go out and listen to them play and listen to Kevin sing, um, they went out of their way to make me and my band feel like we were wanted, like we were really special. They were, they were all true gentlemen. And Kevin and I have uh, maintained a friendship over the years. He kicks my butt at tennis quite often whenever we play. Um, and he was the first guy I called for tonight. When I had the idea, I called Kevin. And I couldn't even, you know, get it out of my mouth. And he said, I'm there. So would you please welcome, the, as the lead singer of REO Speedwagon, I don't need to tell you that uh, this guy's enjoyed millions and millions of albums sold, dozens of top ten singles. And uh, he's going to kick your butts tonight. Would you please welcome Mr. Kevin Cronin? Thank you very much. You're too kind, Richard.